John Coltrane was an American jazz saxophonist. Uh, he was born in 1926 in North Carolina, um, and um, he studied music and learned various instruments uh, in his youth. Uh, in uh, 1945, he joined the Navy, um, and this was his uh, first big experience as a performer, apparently. Um, he joined a, a Navy band uh, called the Melody Masters, um, but despite being very involved, he had to be billed as a guest performer to avoid complications because he was black and the band were officially a white band. Uh, however, by the time he left uh, the Navy service in 1946, he was leading the band. Uh, he had a long career um, uh, in jazz sax. Uh, he worked with uh, names like uh, Miles Davis, Thelonious Monk. He got into free jazz um, and uh, so between 1957 and his death in 1967, he led at least 50 recording sessions and guested on many more. Hi, my name is Dan. So this is an album by John Coltrane. Um, I'll get into a bit of description in a second. Uh, it's my first listen to this album. Uh, but I do know of Coltrane. I've uh, reviewed at least one of his albums before on this channel. Um, this was recorded in one session in 1967, and it was released in 1974. So it was a, f a few years, and it was one of the last sessions he had before he died, apparently. So it's saxophone and drums, uh, basically just the sax and the drums. And there are four tracks that are named after planets. Uh, which I, is the pedant in me wants to point out that planets are not in interplanetary space. They're in, um, in the solar system space. But, um, sorry, interstellar space. Uh, yes, they're in interplanetary space, but not interstellar space. Uh, so this is free jazz. Um, and I think all the tracks start and end with sleigh bells uh, being played by John Coltrane. And in between, it's mostly chaotic playing. Uh, stuff that I found I didn't understand at all. Um, uh, but uh, the one thing that I felt that I did pick out of this is that in the, in the track Venus, which is gentler, uh, it has some what I think of as almost musical sections, not so discordant and crazy as the rest of it. And there was a bit in it where it was obvious that he was rising in semitones through, through keys or modes I don't know which it would be that he was doing, but he was doing something and then he was going up a semitone and doing something similar and then going up a semitone and doing something similar. So I could hear that thing going on. Otherwise, it's pretty much beyond me. And it felt like um, his relationship to what I would think of as understandable music felt like to me uh, the relationship you might have between somebody speaking in English and somebody picking random words out of a dictionary and throwing them around. Um, not even, you know, proper sentence structure or anything to structure it together. So, um, obviously, if somebody just does, uh, you know, nitwit, bubble, tweet, um, start, flu, uh, you know, it's hard to do. You can read the brain, try and think of these random things, but it makes no sense for people if you're just doing random words and it's coming out. And so it made no sense to me. Okay. So what I want to do is, because I didn't understand it, I have there's quite a lot of analysis stuff by um, by critics and other people on the Wikipedia page. So I'm going to read some of that out for you. Um, so there was a guy called Lewis Porter who wrote a book about Coltrane. Um, there's quite a bit of what he said in there, uh, but I want to bring this out. He said, uh, we begin to realize that what at first hearing, may have seemed to be an undisciplined proliferation of notes, is actually an elaboration of various patterns. Okay, So it may be, if firstly, if I understood it better, but also if I were, uh, were prepared to listen to it many times, I might start to see these patterns or to hear these patterns. Uh, a guy called Tony Whiten, um, I just want to read a couple of things that he's read. He's an author. Uh, the removal of identifiable structures, a steady pulse, a clear sense of uh, meter, opens up the music and removes familiar aids of orientation for the listener. Yes, exactly what I'm basically saying. It's taking away the structure, so there's nothing you can hang on to here. But he also goes on to say, Coltrane's music does not convey 
a singular meaning or set of values, but works as an agent for questioning and opening up the discourse about what music could be. And yeah, okay, so I think, you know, maybe he is opening up something and kind of demonstrating where the edges of music are and, uh, you know, where the boundaries are and the structures are by ignoring them and breaking them down. However, in total, I would say it is inaccessible to me. Um, and I'm not somebody who's, you know, I'm not a, a music professional, but I do play instruments and I have a smattering of music theory and I didn't really have a clue. And not only that, I didn't really find it in, in and of itself aesthetically pleasing. So as a music to listen to, for somebody who's used to listening to music you might think of as fairly normal, it didn't appeal to me. I felt like a fine example to me of what happens when music gets too involved in its own cleverness and too much looking at the, the structures. It's an intellectual exercise, but it becomes more and more extreme. Now, I have said several times in these videos, I think that experimentation in music is a good thing. And I think that this, therefore, in principle, is a good thing. As an album to listen to, it's beyond me, and I didn't like it. So that's what I think. So please do tell me what you think of this album. If you've come across it, if you haven't listened to it and you feel like a listen, please have a listen. Uh, if you are put off by my description of it being so uh, chaotic and incoherent, then, yeah, don't listen. Um, but, you know, that's all fine. But if you've got something to say, please do say it. That's it from me for now.